Have you invested hundreds in a CRM but still rely on Excel to do clients follow up? My financial advisor asked me for help into improving his workflow for Microsoft Excel clients follow up. I transformed his Excel workbook in an automated yet simple productivity machine. In this video, I will walk you through how I achieved it. My client is a financial advisor, so he has a list of clients with their asset values. His main goal is to reach his clients at least once a year, and whenever he calls them, he puts the date here in this very specific cell. And then if it's been more than 60 days, let's say, he will put the line in yellow, and then if it's been more than and 120 days by example it will put it in red it's a really messy process and my financial advisor wants two things when he calls his clients he wants to make sure that he reached to them at least once a year on top of that when he calls them he wants to make sure that the data is accurate aka that the asset value is accurate it was a heavy and messy process because my financial advisor has more than a thousand clients and it was not sustainable to use such a process. After building a solid template, I will make sure that the only requirement is to change the call date of each client once we call them and having to do only a few clicks to update the data. The ultimate goal is to have pivot tables like these to easily do clients follow up. We have two requirements to make sure this workflow goes smooth. First, we take the data and then we transform this into a table to make sure the data sticks together. And then whenever we add data, we are sure that our pivot tables don't need to get the range updated and they update automatically. All you need to do is go into insert and then click into table and then click OK. And then your data is going to look like this. The second requirement is to make sure that your dates are always in the same format. You see here that we have the two first line that starts with the year and then the year is at the end and then there's different format. What we're going to do is just always use the equal date function. Then you type the year, then you type the month, then you type the day. Make sure all your data is like this for every row. Next thing we want to do is to add a column to calculate the number of days since I last called my client. We are going to use two functions. We're going to use the today function, which is equal today, parenthesis, and see here what it does. It, it puts today's date. It is a dynamic function. So if I open my workbook tomorrow, I will see November 22 on this very specific row. See, since I converted my data as a table, it filled it everywhere. I don't want this. So I just click on the little autocorrect option here and I click on the square stop automatically creating calculated columns. And then I click here and here we go. I have my data. Now I have my two days date. So I want to use the other function, which is days 360. I'm going to type days 360 here equal days 360, which is the start date. The start date is actually the last time I called my client. So I'm going to select the date here. Then I put a comma and then I put the two day into parenthesis. Here we go. And then I just change the format to number here. I have 192 days. I just double click on the bottom right to drag my formula down. And here we go. I didn't call Donald Trump for more than three years now. <laughs> The other column I need to create is to put my days in two buckets. If it's less than 30 days, I want to put it less than 30 days here. And then if it's more than 30 days or more than 120, I want to put it there. It will be useful for when I do my pivot tables, AKA my dashboard at the very end. So I will name my column here, call it bucket days. And then what I'll do is go into a new tab and create the buckets. Okay. So what I do here, I will call them bucket. I will say lower end and I will call bucket name. Okay. Let's call it like that. And then the bucket uh, zero to 60, it will be 61 to 120 and then 120 plus. And then in the second column, we put the lower end of the bucket. So zero 61, 120. The bucket name, we'll call it less than 60 days. We'll call it 61 to 120 days. And here we'll call it 120 days 
clause. So now we have our buckets. That's really important. We are going to use one function that is called XLOOKUP. It is available in Excel 365. And don't blink here because this tip will be useful for the rest of your life. I swear it's going to save your life. Here we go. So we write equal X lookup. We are going to select the lookup value, which will be the days, which we calculated together with the two day function and the days 365 function. In the lookup array, we are going to go in our bucket tab. We're going to select the whole column of the lower end. We're going to put a comma. And then in the return array, we're going to put the bucket name in column C. Then we're going to put another comma if not found you just leave it blank okay and then in the match mode that's the important part you put minus one so what it's gonna do is gonna give us our buckets for our dates i click enter and then i drag my formula and i have 120 days everywhere which means that my formula works i will show you i will change this date here for today's date okay or let's say yesterday 23 and then 11 and then let's say 20 it switched less than 60 days and then let's see if our 60 to 120 days bucket works let's put date to 2023 let's put september and here we go we have 80 days and it automatically swaps to 61 to 120 days so we just created our bucket days which will be useful later i'm going to show you something that will make your data way more visual even though we don't look much at this very big data sheet i'll show you something useful so with just a glimpse you can understand if you have a lot of work to do okay so we're going to use the conditional formatting click on your bucket days let's take the first line by example and then click on conditional formatting we're gonna go into manage rules and then click on new rule we're gonna select the last one use a formula to determine which cell to format and then we're gonna go here we're gonna put equal click on your bucket days here it's very important to delete the second dollar signs okay and then we're going to put another equal. We are going to go in our buckets tab that we created. And we're going to put the less than 60 days. And we are going to format that it's green. So when it's less than 60 days, we're going to go into fill and then click on green. Here we go. And then we click OK. We are going to actually duplicate the rules twice and then we're going to change it. So when it's 61 to 120 days, we're going to put it in yellow. And then when it's more than 120 days, we're going to put it in red. So I'm going to do this real quick. So here, the only thing I did is I clicked on edit rules. Here I can put C6, which is actually 120 plus days in my other tab. I click on format and then I will put a really aggressive red here because <laughs> I really want to call these clients. And then I click OK and then I click apply. And here we go. We have our column G that is all colored. What I can do actually is if I want the whole row to be colored, I can just apply to everything here. And here we go. I just copy everything here and then click apply. Okay, so here we are. We have our rule. And guess what? If I just select everything, I click on the format painter at the top and I select everything else, see how my 120 days it shows in red now. And let's say I called Donald Trump, which is row four. I'm just going to update my date, 2023, November 20. It goes then less than 60 days and it automatically swaps to green. So with just a glimpse, you can see if you have a lot of calls to do or if everything is fine. Now that we have our master client follow-up sheet, we might want to update the asset values of my client, but I don't want to break everything else I just did, the dates I calculated, the conditional formatting and everything. So I will show you a tip on how to update your asset values without breaking anything. And we are going to use the XLOOKUP function that we just saw together. I made another tab that is called asset list. Let's say I extract this list daily and I just insert it in my Excel using copy paste or any other tool to import data really fast. 
So I am going to go back in my data sheet and I would click on the asset value and I'm going to override it with an X lookup. I just write equal X lookup and then I will select the unique value of every client, which is their social insurance number. Feel free to know the Joe Biden social insurance number here. So maybe you can steal his identity and get some money. <laughs> All right, click on the sin. And then for the lookup array, we are going to go into the asset list, take the old column A, and then we are going to put a comma and then the return array will be the asset value. If you want to know how to do a XLOOKUP or if you're familiar with VLOOKUP and don't know the difference between XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, I have a video right here at the top where I explain everything in details about XLOOKUP function. Then I click on enter and as you can see my Joe Biden value went up to five million dollars he's pretty poor i thought the president of the united states was earning way more and then i drive my formula and here we go my conditional formatting stays the same everything stays the same i have updated value let's say i want to update donald trump value by example i will put something that you will remember nine 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 and then i go in the data sheet and it just updates so i have a function at the top that is always linked with my asset value and just automatically updates as I add my data list in there. All right, let's build the final result together. We have our data, it's super easy to update. All we have to do now is to change the date in column E and we're all set. So we are going to select our old data, click on insert and we are going to make a pivot table. We are going to put it in a new worksheet and click OK. And this will be the pivot table for our clients that are, let's say, uh, more than 120 plus days. We are going to add the social insurance number in the rows, the client name, the asset values, and actually the days as a value. And we're going to put the bucket days as a filter. OK, it looks great, right? We can just stop there. Just kidding. We are going to make this look a little bit nicer. We're going to go in the design tab at the top and then we're going to go into report layout and then click on show tabular form. And then in the subtotals, we put do not show subtotals and we can also remove the grand totals. Here we go. We have a table, we have a dashboard and then we can click here in the bucket days and just filter 120 plus days so we only have our client that have 120 plus days there and we can rename this tab 100 plus days then all we can do is just duplicate you right click on your tab click on move or copy click on create a copy and then move to end double click let's rename this one 61 to 120 days and then we can even put the color in yellow because that's the color in our data sheet, right? And then we can put the 120 plus days in red. And here on my 61 to 120 days tab, we just switch it to this filter. Here we go. And now let's duplicate this again and make it for the less than 60 days. So we have Donald Trump in the less than 60 days. And let's say today we call Joe Biden. We call Joe Biden. We go in data sheet. All we have to do, we put the today's date, 21. Bang, it's switched into less than 60 days. It's now in green. I go in my tab, 61 to 120 days. Joe Biden is still there. What's going on? My formulas are not working. No, no, no. It's just because you have one more click to do. You right click on the pivot table and you click on refresh and now you go in the less than 60 days and joe biden is here in this list super amazing we have our dashboard we have three pivot table we have the 120 plus days the 61 to 120 days and the less than 60 days and if you want to refresh all your pivot table at once so you don't have to click on every one of them you just click here on the pivot table analyze tab you click on little arrow below refresh and click on refresh all 
here we go we have a dashboard now we can easily follow our clients we can follow up with them call them whenever we want all we have to do is change the call date and to periodically update their asset values we don't need to touch anything else if we just got a new client and we want to update this it's very easy you just type his info there and look at the behavior of a table it puts everything there and once again our pivot table if we go here all we have to do is refresh and it's gonna update with our new client as well with just a simple refresh. If you ever need help improving your Excel workflows in your business, feel free to reach out. I will put the links in the comments so I can teach you things you didn't know and you can save precious hours. Cheers.